The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go, baby. Are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Ambar Garcia, Brian Broadus, Patrick Walker, and Derek Eagleton. It is Wednesday, April 10th, 2024, season 20, episode number two. Welcome to the latest edition of The Break. We're live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star, presented by LG. Uh, and today we're going to be talking draft. We're heading right in as Patrick Walker is showing you our draft magazine. It's just been released. You can get it online um, right now. Uh, the hard copy is still not available to purchase, but you can get to it online. Go check out DallasCowboys.com forward slash Star, I think, is the uh, the URL to be able to get to that, and uh, you can go check that out. But we're going to get into the draft today. We're going to talk a lot about uh, four different positions, or at least we're going to try to get to four positions. We may not get all the way there. Uh, but the, the idea is that so we're going to kind of talk. You're going to get one. <laughs> we're going to see. Uh, we're going to walk work through these positions, and we're going to talk about them from a couple, a couple different angles. Obviously, the draft show gets really deep into players. We'll talk a little bit about some of the players but what we'll spend a lot of the time in is evaluating the positions and what's happening at the position with the Cowboys and what is now the objective for the Cowboys going into the draft at each of these positions uh, so that then we can back into, okay, so who are some of the names uh, that fans should should be thinking about? Brian, I wanted to start the show first uh, with you. It's two weeks now out from the draft. Yeah. Uh, paint a picture for fans of what has happened to this point for teams and where they are and what they're doing right now for the last two weeks before they make the first selection. Yeah, we got the final bit of medical information in. Uh, we got the final rechecks in, so all that's put to bed right now. Jim Maurer, Britt Brown. Have got rechecks, the, tell me what that is. The rechecks are when guys have existing injuries at the combine that doesn't allow them to work out then they are brought back. There's some guys that will have uh, surgeries, and the doctors will get a look at them at the combine, and then they'll bring them back uh, a few weeks later and recheck that got before, it. just to make sure that the healing process is right. So they got that squared up. Uh, you're in a room now. It's really important for the scouts, a huge responsibility for the scouts to – present their players uh this is uh, there's a lot of guys and gals in that room that uh haven't seen these players before you know they've got their areas of the country that they work so the presentation part of it not only to the scouts but to the joneses and to mike mccarthy is really important here uh you know that they that they make sure that every bit of information that they have that they're able to project and let and then you're going to have your cross checkers your position checkers and then they'll put a final grade on these guys. So there's a lot of going on, but the, it all starts with the area scout and his ability to present the player, and then they work it from there. And then that's how they become they, until they come to the uh, the agreement of where that tag goes on the board and how they're going to stack that board. So it's very important for that lead scout to be to be the, the to get it the player off to a good start. I'm fascinated by that. It, it, what does that room look like? Is it a situation where, and we've all had to walk to the front of the room and give a presentation. Yeah. Is it that type of situation where you walk up, you give a presentation, you got a slideshow, you got some film, you show some different things. Is that what they're doing and walking the coaches yeah. and, the, and the administration front office through each player? Yeah, it, everybody, uh, it's funny, everybody, it, it's not assigned seating, but you sit in the same spot. Yeah, you know everybody, where everybody sits. You know where everybody sits. Yeah. And so uh, uh, Will will call the player. Uh, the, the name of the player, and then the, the scout who has that air sitting in his spot will just give his report Got it. of what he sees. And then if there is, like I say, if there's a national checker, an over-the-top guy, he will give his report. And then you might have a fill-in from a position standpoint, uh, a guy that's responsible for all the quarterbacks, responsible for all the offensive line. So you basically get three reports. You get three reports, and you might get a coach's report, and then that's when you start to watch the tape. So there'll be a there'll be a verbal part of the report that everybody hears, and then they'll go to the tape, and then as a group they'll make the determination from the information they got from the scouts and their their own look 
and then that's how they get the tag up. How do they put together that tape? So, for example, and I know I'm going deep in this, but I think yeah. it's interesting stuff, and I think fans don't really get an inside view. But yeah. when they put together the tape, is it a highlight reel, or is it just kind of like random place so you can see the good and the bad? Well, it, it, it used to be in the day before we had the technology that they have today, it used to be you had to kind of break all that up. Mm -hmm. If you're watching cornerbacks, there's nothing worse than the ball not going at the cornerback. Right. So every time the ball goes in the cornerback's direction, good or bad, you're seeing that. And do they go through every play? Like literally they do. every they play? Start, yeah, you start. Wow. They, they have the ability to, to go from every game that they've played. They have the ability to make that tape where they can, you know, the first game of the season through, say, a bowl game or a national championship situation. And they'll pull those together. And then they'll, and then what will happen is they'll, uh, as they're doing that, it, it gives you an idea because you're seeing play after play after play after play. And it gives you a really good feel for the guy. Do they do that for? Every player that's going to be in the draft? Well, yeah, every player. It's easy wow. It's easy for offensive linemen because what you could do is you just can watch offensive and defensive True. linemen play. You can watch them work. That's easy. It's the skill positions that are the problem. You can watch throws, too. Another one is, hey, they've got it down to where you can break it down to all third down throws. Mm -hmm. You can break it down to all red zone throws. You know, you could like, okay, this guy is really good in this area. And then, okay, well, let's see how good he is yeah. as compared to the other areas. Got it. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a it's a lot of work. I mean, it's a lot of work. But when you when you the the, the fun part of it is to be able to try and separate guys, mm -hmm. and that's where you know the, uh, with Will, that's what he's done a really good job with is marrying the Joneses to the coaches to the scouts. It's a very difficult job he has because somebody's always pissed off at him. Yeah. You know, somebody's always mad at him for oh you're 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 you're, you're you're coddling the scouts. Oh, you're coddling the coaches. Oh, you're coddling the Joneses. You know, yeah. he, he does a really good job of balancing all that out to make sure that everybody feels like that they have a say in that room. And I know I've heard but, in the past um, <clears throat> that that's one of the most difficult things when you have a coaching change or yeah. something like that, being able to understand what that coach specifically wants and mm -hmm. is looking for. But I think the track record that Will McClay has – speaks for itself to where anyone who would be coming in here would absolutely trust his his eye and his work and his opinion. So I think it's just marrying the two. And in this yeah. instance, is having Mike Zimmer mm -hmm. back into the mix and understanding really what he's looking for in this draft. Yeah, Mike is, a, Mike, has, Mike is one of those guys and working with him all the years. Mike is a very much, you bring me the guys – you know, just bring me guys. I, I like you said, Amber. Tr I trust what you're going to do. Mike's mm -hmm. got some specifics that he talks about: his interchangeable safeties, the 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 ability, the stickiness of his corners, the size of his linebackers. Uh, you know, he he's really big on smarts, football intelligence, and things like that. Mike is. If you're not smart, Mike's not going to play you. So. You know, he, he does have that trust in, in Will and, you know, like, you know, like, hey, listen, bring me guys, but make sure they have these qualities. One thing I really like about Will McClay is his ability to kind of uh, learn and evolve from whatever error might have occurred. So, that, for example, when you talk about, you know, is he leaning on this particular pick toward the scouts or the coaches, you can use Taco Charlton as an example in that that was more of a Rob Marinelli standing on the table for a guy because he wanted a scheme fit versus who the best player available, even at that position was, which was T.J. Watt at the time. But then when you look at uh, the incoming era of Dan Quinn, and Dan Quinn showed this team, how, or reminded this team how to value the safety position, how to value defensive tackle, and then you saw Will McClay kind of go to that, and then what did they do they use the first round pick on a nose tackle for the first time since what Russell Maryland mm -hmm. so I, I love that that aspect is with Will McClay as well it's not always and it's rarely ever this is who I want this is what we're going with he's taking feedback from all sides and he's really trying to land on the best particular player yeah the, the thing with Taco though is interesting because I got yelled at by Will one time for this uh you know because I knew exactly what you just said about Rod Marinelli and Will confronted me and said that's not true mm. that's not true at all he goes, we as a group came to realization that that was our player. And I'm saying, well, are you taking one for the team here? And he goes, no. He goes, we really did. He goes, I got to wear that one. That's one I'm unaware. He goes, the coaches were involved. I was involved. He stood up on the table for Mozzie Smith, DallasCowboys.com. DallasCowboys.com did a great job That's of the war, the war room cam that the information they get, you guys do a hell of a job with this, that Will stood up and said, Mozzie Smith is our guy. You know, and that's and that's what you have to do, but you have to be able, you know, for for all the Zach Martins and and all the the Tyler Smiths and all the, you know, 
Sometimes you're going to have one that's probably not going the right direction for you. But uh, to your point, and, and you know, you're right, Rod Marinelli had a big hand in that. But Will basically MF'd me for saying it. <laughs> and, and, I, and, I, and I, you know what, I looked at him and I said, okay, then wear it. Yeah, and he goes, yeah. I will wear it. And it's fair. And by the way, Will's you know, got, Will can handle it. He can He's handle it. Shoulders, he can, he can handle, handle it. it. And, and that's the great thing about Will McClay. You, he could get in your face and you could get in his face, but he knows, he knows how to handle it. And, you know, I he, still give him I, I crap say, till this I w- day about Rico Gathers. <laughs> I, I always go up to him. I There's say, oh, Rico. Rico. <laughs> but but you, you feel comfortable doing that when you know someone's so good yeah, at yeah, what yeah, they do no that, doubt. hey, yeah. once in a way, while. Yeah. It's like baseball, right? If you if once in every time you – every three times you go up to bat, you hit the ball, yeah. you might be going to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, like, that's, right? that's the nature. And, and scouting – like you're not gonna be 100. Yeah. percent Nobody is. Like if you go, if you're going 50 percent, in in you know when you're you in start getting a second day, yeah, yeah you you Fair are spelling. doing something yeah. special. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that you know he's not gonna be perfect. That that whole group is not gonna be perfect when it comes to but picking they're players. But they are, they are doing very well when you put there's them relative a, to other teams around the league. There's a lot of pressure on him in this draft. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. a lot of no pre- doubt. There's pressure on every it's scout in least. every draft, but this one especially because. There's two things that are going to have to happen. They're going to have to get some quality as far as some potential starters, day one starters, and they're also going to have to have a second draft with that uh, the undrafted free agents. Yeah. Jerry and Steven and, and those guys are going to have to be super aggressive. If there's guys on their draft board left, they'll go after those guys first, and they have a good history of that. So it's a, kind of a two-fold plan for them. Get, get, some, get some guys that can come here and be plug and plays and then be ready to get replenish the depth with those uh, UDFAs that they're going to get after the draft. I mean, it has to serve as their de facto free agency uh, is the way I look at it because as far as bringing talent in from the yeah. outside, you've done it with one player only, Eric Kendricks. Um, and then you talk about who you lost uh, in free agency, Durant Armstrong. And, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with losing Tyler Biadish, but it's still a, a starter that you lost. So, objectively speaking, you lost yeah. your starter there. you got to figure that out. Um, Dante Fowler, impact rotational guy, right. and the list goes on. So, you know, this has to be a draft where, of course, they're looking at – and Brian made an excellent point a couple of episodes so ago, yeah, they're really looking at this 2023 draft class yeah. and saying you have to step up big in year two. But at the same 22 time, 22 and 23, and 23. Yeah. Now, kudos yeah. to 2022 because they fired right out of the gate. So that is definitely one of the better draft classes, and that goes to batting average. What you're talking about, but this 2024 draft class, they're you know as as elite as Will McClain his scouts are, they're really kind of up against it and making sure they that are. this class comes out of the gate firing, oh, much like the 2022 class did. This class cannot be what 2023 class was. They yep. need them too much right now 2005 yeah. draft would be okay for him right now with where and those guys. yes <laughs> that, was a good one. that was a good yeah. honestly that Chris might Canty. be the best draft that, certainly was the best draft that they've had since i've been with the team yeah, like that that yeah, year that was, was amazing uh, well with the number of players they got that that not only played well here but even played at other teams and played really well they had a lot of players out of that draft are right, we going to take our first dra- our first break when we come back we'll jump into draft by position we're going to talk about the quarterback position first lots of things to dive into that uh that that discussion will do when we come back dallascowboys.com radio Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Cowboys fans, after that move, we've just coined the term Rowdy Replay. Let's roll back the tape. Okay, there's our mascot Rowdy cheering on the boys. And now he's on his phone, on his Bank of America mobile banking app? Staying on top of his finances with his virtual financial assistant, Erica. Bank of America's digital tools are so impressive. Cowboys fans just can't stop banking. Learn more at bankofamerica.com slash can't stop banking. Erica is only available in in the English language. You must download the latest version of the mobile banking app, only available on select mobile devices. Message and data rates may apply. Member FDIC. Welcome back into Dear Doctor, the show where I answer life's questions with an ice-cold can of Dr. Pepper. Sheila, let's hear from our next caller, would you? Dear Doctor, my friend supported me during a tough time, but what's the right gift that says, thanks for being a shoulder to cry on? Okay, this one's easy. I say give her a delicious Dr. Pepper. Nothing says, thanks, girl. Better than a -a one-of-a-kind soda. Yes, any Dr. Pepper flavor will do. Now, just a reminder that I don't need to be a real doctor to know that Dr. Pepper 
is the one you deserve. They say champions are remembered, but legends are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you. Back to the break. Hey, we got the Reliant Home Run Derby coming up. It's the 11th annual Reliant Home Run Derby to be exact. It's back at uh, Riders Field in Frisco on May 1st at 6 p.m. Come and see your favorite Dallas Cowboys players. Swing for the fences to raise money for the Salvation Army. Admission and parking are free. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash Reliant H. R.D. to learn more. See you there. Welcome back. Second segment of The Break Live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star, presented by LG. And this segment is brought to you by blockchain.com. All right, let us jump into the uh, draft by position. Let's start with the quarterback position. I want a general overview. Uh, we'll go to each person. Tell me just your general thoughts right now as far as strengths and weaknesses. And this is not about just Dak. This is about the entire draft quarterback room what are the strengths and weaknesses of the quarterback room? Patrick, let's start with you. Uh, well, as it stands, um, absent a an extension on Dak Prescott, you don't have a future at the quarterback position just yet until you lock Dak Prescott up beyond 2024. Um, because if it continues as it is and he enters the season on a contract year, then you're looking at that in combination with um, you don't know what you have with Trey Lance. And as you look to get uh, – infinitely more reps from Trey Lance in training camp and preseason so that he can compete for the QB2 spot. You don't know if he's that third overall pick that entered the NFL draft uh, as far as having the possible potential to not only be a QB2, but maybe a QB1 option if the world exploded and you weren't able to get Dak Prescott on a long-term deal. Uh, and then we know what Cooper Rush is, so Rose is the Cooper Rush for being exactly what he is, which is a really good backup in this league, but that's kind of what his ceiling is. He can step in for a few games as we saw um, when Dak Prescott was out 4-1 and one record. He can win you those games, but not necessarily the guy that I would say would take you to a Super Bowl, uh, even if you were to have an elite defense. So you got a lot of questions to answer there as far as the future is concerned. You can answer uh, that in a big way by going ahead and getting Dak Prescott on a long-term deal. But uh, absent that, you just don't know what's going on uh, with the backup role at minimum. And then until you get Dak extended, you don't know what's going on with the QB1 spot. We don't know what's going on at QB2 with Lance. They might. Yeah, fair. They might. Uh, we're we, We're – you know, we haven't seen it with our own eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, we get 15 minutes of practice a day, and usually it's stretching and some type of drills. He's a great stretcher. Yeah, yeah. great stretcher. Great stretcher. <laughs> great stretcher. We, you know, we do, runs we, well, we, jogs we, well. We had an idea what the kicking situation was last year out there <laughs> right. in Oxnard. We figured that one out real fast. <laughs> uh, but overall, um, yeah, they probably know a lot more about their quarterback situation than we do, and that's okay. You know, until until that you know we until we see him play. We have an idea what kind of college player he was. If you listen to the draft show, we talked about him a bunch. Um, was he surprised pick that high? Yeah, I think so. But, you know, they made a commitment to him. They, they sent a fourth-round pick off to, um, to get his services. I know they had a high second-round grade on him. So, you know, they were trying to get ahead of the curve here with this quarterback situation and going and getting a guy that they feel like that they could work with. So you have to trust him on that. Uh, Patrick's talking about the contract stuff. We we don't know how that's going to completely play out, but you have an MVP quarterback if you can get him signed. You know that's the question that they have to answer. Uh, do they look at this draft particularly and say, and we'll probably get into this, will they go draft a quarterback? There's people floating that idea, but when I confront the people floating the idea, they're like, well, don't you think they would? <laughs> and I'm like, you don't sound too yeah, sure about this. Right. To hill. say you have a report. I, I, yeah, why, this is why I hate this time of year yeah. in certain ways. Yeah. Because we're supposed to be responsible to you folks out there. And we're not. We're not responsible. We And I'm sorry, I'm on my soapbox here. No, I like this. Go. <laughs> but, but the thing about it is when you throw out there that Dallas is looking at quarterbacks, and then I go, huh, are you think that? Even with Trey Lance, they gave up a four? Well, don't you think? I go, wait a minute, you don't think. So this is a this is where you have to be careful. And me personally, I if they go after a quarterback, I would be surprised. Mm -hmm. I really would. With the number of picks they have currently 
unless all of a sudden they start moving back, moving back, moving back, and picking up extra thirds and fourth round picks mm -hmm. and potentially fifth round picks. You know, they're going to see they're going to see what Trey Lance is, and Trey Lance is not signed long term either. But he might be easier to get done than what your current quarterback is. Mm -hmm. I think that's what they're looking at right now. Yeah, that's what I was going to say as far as like the number of picks that they currently have plus the necessities that they have on other key positions yeah. on the roster. Um, it would be hard to imagine a draft this year where they do draft somebody uh, at quarterback. Wouldn't surprise me undrafted player they signed someone like that uh we have heard jerry jones say in the past how the plan is to always draft or get a quarterback during the draft and that you want to do that every single year yeah that kind yeah. of comes yeah. and goes yeah. with this team yeah a little bit yeah so again undrafted i can see that but as far as quarterbacks and also with dak prescott and not to get into the whole conversation how good is dak can he take you where you want him to take you and all of that i know he was a mess in that playoff game and so was everybody else in that game but at the same time um, a lot of what he showed us and me this year this past season I felt like he took such a step up in his game in general overall that it gives me a little bit more confidence and I say this well knowing how he performed in that playoff game and that's a huge issue but still it was good to see growth in him this last year in like his most recent year to where it makes me feel like okay maybe you have not reached the top with him and you still have some room that you can work with so as far as future if he does end up even longer term here with the Cowboys it gives me some ease in that aspect of hope that maybe he can push it further. Well, I did, and I, I'm doing an odds piece, shameless plug, on DallasCowboys.com. Check it out, ladies and gentlemen. It's called High Low, which addresses the, the Cowboys' thought process and the odds of them approaching any particular position in the upcoming draft. And uh, quarterbacks is coming up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give you a spoiler. You can still need to check it out next Friday to see what the, the insight is onto that. But I, I have it ranked as uh, extremely low. Yeah. Uh, and because all things considered, I'm right there with Brian, and I've said this both on and off record. I don't foresee a situation where the Cowboys, who gave up a fourth-round pick for Trey Lance, then turn around and use draft collateral to double down on the position when they do have an MVP-caliber quarterback, an all-pro quarterback. Yes, you need to get that deal locked in, but they're confident they're going to get it done. He's confident they're going to get it done. So the bigger question is at backup quarterback, and for that, they have Trey Lance. And if Trey Lance can develop uh, as they are seen and as they hope and then give you at least that flash that maybe, maybe, if things in the, the minute possibility that things go wrong with Dak and Trey can step up into that role, then again, that still justifies you not drafting a quarterback. So is it impossible? No. Is it likely? Not. Not at all. You guys live in the building and you see and you, hear, bag you hear and you <laughs> see and all that. To me, I've not heard anything negative about Trey Lance. No, mm -mm. I, I, haven't, I haven't heard one thing negative about Trey Lance. So if we were if hearing, anything, I've heard he's very involved and, and that's willing what I'm to saying. learn so that's much. That's what I'm yeah. saying. To me, Trey Lance is you had a grade on him of a high second round grade. If they had twenty two player first round grades on their board, where his grade fell would be twenty three. He would be the twenty third best player on their board in that draft. The owner general manager made a determination to go and go you want to give up a four and go, yeah, let's go. You know, there's some thought there. There's some thought there. And like I say, we haven't seen him practice every day. But I haven't heard anybody say, man, we, we can't, we're not going to be able to get anything right. out of this guy. Yeah. If that was the case, if that was the case, then I would believe what people are saying. Well, they, they could they could be one of those sleeper teams that no, you know. No, no there's not 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 only only because I haven't heard any negative stuff about Trey Lance. If I heard that, man, the guy can't play. He can't play. I'm no, and sorry. there's there's not been anything bad, and, yeah. and you're absolutely right. the The only thing that the only knock to him that I've heard, which is an objective knock, it's from McCarthy himself, and he said he came in, he was a bit green still, yeah. which made absolute sense that he was still a bit green. But sure. uh, he McCarthy has also said that he's made a lot of strides. He lives in the meeting room, he mm -hmm. lives in the film room. Uh, and keep in mind, when we're talking about Mike McCarthy, we're kind of talking about a QB whisperer there a little bit. So we're talking about somebody who, as a he head coach and as a play caller, he has experience developing a young quarterback 
backs and two viable starters and franchise players in the league. So uh, all signs point to Trey Lance taking some strides, but it is going to be predicated upon what they're going to give him now, which is a ton more reps in training camp, a ton more reps yeah. in preseason, which is something we'll he didn't see. get last season. See, I, I was talking to people in San Francisco about him, and I go, I go, what's the deal? And the, my guys in San Francisco all to a, to a, to a man was like, if he didn't get hurt, he was going to be our starter. He just got hurt. He got hurt at the worst times. Mm. And every time we were making a little step going forward, he would get hurt. And it was unfortunate injuries that would happen to him along the way. But they were they were okay with Trey Lance, though. They were worried about the injuries and stuff right. like that. Is this one it's like in Cincinnati, if we were doing talking bingles right now, we'd be worried about Joe Burrow being healthy oh, all the time. Yeah. We'd be talking like, hey, do you think the Bengals should draft a quarterback? And and he'd be like <laughs> well, really? And it's like, well, Joe's hurt all the time. You know, I mean, that's kind of where, you yeah. know, that's. Thanks, Bengals. We gave you a segment. Yeah, yeah exactly. But anyway. Yeah. It, it's I have, I have not heard one negative thing about Trey Lance agreed. yet. Let's, let's take a little bigger picture, though. And this is more of a strategic question. This is not specific. You got specific. the one position today, Derek. Good yeah, job. Yeah, I know. I know. It, it, this is how it usually goes. Um, <laughs> this is not specific to Dak. This is not specific to Trey or to Cooper Rush, to be yeah. fair. But I, I've heard it said, and I think, Brian, you mentioned it a couple weeks ago on our show, and I've heard other people talking about it just in general as, is this a better strategy? When you look across the NFL, more and more you're seeing teams that are eating up so much of their cap space if they have a yes. really good quarterback with the amount that they're having to pay them. Yes. And and what that means, in effect, is there's less that you can spend on other positions, and so a lot of those teams then have to start picking and choosing who they're going to spend on who they're not going to spend on because they're paying so much for the quarterback. Is another strategy, a viable strategy, to always draft quarterbacks? And the idea being you turn the quarterback over at whatever point it's going to cost that big contract. And you just now I know it's scary because trying to find oh, a sure. quarterback is extremely scary in the NFL. But does that create a better paradigm for you when you think about it from the standpoint if you can put the right team around them, then you can actually make a quarterback that may not be as attractive initially a lot better. I mean, it would be the argument you would make for somebody like a Dak Prescott. You put him around a really good, you put him into a really good situation and he can excel as opposed to a lot of the quarterbacks that get drafted in the first round go into horrible situations and they fail, right? Yeah. What do you think about the strategy? Can I, okay, can I start off real quick? And and I understand everything that you're saying and it's absolutely right when you start looking at money and numbers and everything like that. It gets at a point that you're sitting where we're at mm. right this moment. But... Here's my thing. Although the Cowboys got Tony Romo undrafted, got Dak in the fourth round, they have been success in in parentheses because they haven't. That's and that's where I'm going at. Not to criticize them because I love them both, but at what point do you have to give up a lot more capital to get a a quarterback at a higher level where you're actually using draft capital and drafting a quarterback very, very high to potentially give you a different end result than to what you have seen over how many years? Uh, I don't know. I, I've lost track. But. Yeah, but isn't the percentage chance there? I mean, it's still kind of the same. There are a lot of quarterbacks that have been drafted high in the first round that didn't reach the level of Hello, success. Chicago Bears. Yeah, that haven't even reached the level of success that you talked about with Tony Romo and Dak Prescott, yeah. to where they're consistently winning regular I'm just season saying. games. No, I get, I'm I get I mean, it. I don't have the answer for you. And by you. the way, I'm, I'm just... not. I, I think a lot of this is is up for conjecture because I don't think there really is a proven way to do it. Yeah. And so I think it's fair to ask that question. I'm just saying, like, I don't know that I'm going to get a better result from doing it with the the route of having to completely tear down everything, be one of the worst teams in the league, and then get a high draft well, pick, and then that restarts your franchise. The said coach benefited for one of the all-time great draft quarterback no doubt. falls in the history of falling no doubt. quarterbacks. A quarterback that went could potentially gone at one and ends up at 24. Mm -hmm. You know, that's he benefited from that. Aaron Rodgers. Yep. Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. And Ted Thompson, my old buddy at the Green Bay Packers, uh, Teddy's like, I'm drafting defense. Talk to him. I'm drafting defense, drafting defense, drafting defense. What? Aaron Rodgers, what? <laughs> oh my God, he's down, he's come down to it. We're on the clock. We got to take this quarterback, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, that sometimes I don't know if this team is in that in that mode right now. 
and just because there's so – if you're a team that, it, that you didn't lose everybody – this year, if if you had yeah. everybody signed up, if you didn't lose all those guys to the commanders, if you didn't lose, you know, if you weren't in a, I just feel like to me that if you're in a really stable situation, you got all your picks and you got all your team, your roster kind of built. Yeah. 24. Yeah, sure. We got Brett Favre. But let's take this Aaron Rodgers though, too. Mm-hmm. And maybe, you know, I just feel like there's so many other things. Now, let me get, be real clear here. In this draft, if Michael Penix from Washington were to fall to me at 24, everything I just said about Trey Lance and everybody else is out the window. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, seriously. I mean, there's certain things that if a quarterback of certain level falls to you, you're like, what are we doing here? We got to go here, don't we? Don't we got to go? And, you know, it, it sounds crazy, but this head coach here benefited that more than anybody Reset in, the, their hi- franchise. in yeah. the history of the National Football League. And and what they did is they said, Favre, you're gone. Aaron Rodgers, you're a quarterback. And the next thing you know, here we go. But it's tough. It's yeah. a tough thing to – these quarterbacks, it's a tough position to find. But sometimes you get a gift. You know, mm-hmm. like this number four that you got was a gift. It was a gift, yeah. It yeah. was a gift. Because yeah. the evaluation, it took Wade Wilson, you know, God rest his soul – he took Wade Wilson saying, if we're going to draft a quarterback, let's take this guy. Dick Rabine at the New England Patriots. Hey, Dick, we're going to draft a quarterback here in the sixth round. I like this Brady guy from Michigan. If you want to give me a quarterback, that's me. Okay, we'll draft this Brady kid. Sometimes you get that, yeah. that break, you know, and it, sometimes you don't have to go up to the top of the board to get that because the Bears are proven, I mentioned them earlier, the Bears are proven that the team that keeps drafting in the top ten – and find a court, it hasn't worked. Mm-hmm. It hasn't worked. But to your point, yeah, if you're a general manager that has job security, I'm rolling my quarterback every four years. Mm-hmm. But I've talked to a couple of general managers like, man, I'm going to get fired. Right. That would be I, a lot I, of stress. I'm, I'm going to get fired. It's and a this, ton of stress. This is my guy down in Tampa, you know, uh, Jason Light. Man, I'm going to get fired. Oh, wait, you have a time to get Tom Brady here? Five-year extension. We go to the Super Bowl <laughs> win. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. Les Snead out there in the Rams. Oh, man, I'm going to get fired. You know, they trade for their guy. Go to the Super Bowl, get a five year extension. Yeah. Sometimes that it happens in a good way for you. But, man, if you if you have the, this job security to be able to churn your quarterback, yeah. mm-hmm. do it. If you can give me a, a A plus roster, an A roster, an A minus roster consistently, and all I got to do is dump a quarterback into that that can manage it. And every once in a while, I get one that's a little better than even just managing yeah. it. That's the question. Are you willing to yeah. accept that over the other, right? See, you're right. And I would take a B-plus roster to do that with, yeah. too, by the way. I mean, I don't even have to have an A roster. Because if I get, like, if if I know that my core, if my receivers, I mean, just think about the team. Look what, look what that guy in San Francisco does. Yeah. They got an A-plus tight end. They got A-plus skill guys. They traded for a running back that's hurt every damn week in Carolina, and he hadn't missed a game in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Sometimes just having those pieces around make that guy that's drafted the very last pick of the draft work out perfectly for you. Well, I, two points for me. One, I'll tell everybody what Jerry Jones said about yeah, this particular fair. aspect. He said, when asked if the Cowboys would look at drafting a quarterback in 2024, he said, and I quote, the prospect could be the greatest thing since ice cream, and you can bet the Cowboys won't take him, end quote. So you can interpret that however you like. Mm. Not a lot of room for interpretation Sounds there. like he's all in on that. I was yeah, going to say, right. yeah. <laughs> Seems pretty set. So, so, there, so there's that. And by, trans- the way, yeah. and by the way, this question is not about this year. This question is about philosophically as yeah. they move forward. How should but they be looking they at it? They talk about it. We all talk about yeah, it. Yeah. Every team talks about taking a quarterback every year, and then we get to the final bit of the draft, and we look at the sheet they hand us, and there's not a damn quarterback on that sheet. <laughs> right. They talk about it every year. Yeah. They, they said, when we were at Green Bay, we're the ones that started it. We yeah. didn't draft a quarterback every year. Yeah. It's kind of one of those. What happens? See what happens. Yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the Packers were really good at, you know, yeah, we, we, if the quarterback fit, we draft him. But if it wasn't, well, I'm not going to listen. Yeah. If I'm putting on my GM cap and, and most GMs around the league, they their job security is based upon how well they're Every, drafting. And, right. Yes. So, so if I'm putting that kind of GM hat on, I am subscribing only to the uh, the premise of drafting at least a guy to develop 
every year or every other year, maybe. Right. But in this situation, it's so difficult to find not only a franchise quarterback, but one to find one that's at an MVP caliber level. That is exceptional. Now to find one at an MVP caliber level on day three. Yeah. Or undrafted, the odds of that happening, you, you're better off playing Powerball and probably winning. Because in the same draft that the Cowboys were able to get Dak Prescott, guess who they had interest in? But it got snatched away from them. Paxton Lynch, how'd yeah. that work out? Guess who else? Connor Cook, yeah. how'd that work out? Carson Wentz, top of the draft, how'd that work out? Right? He's now a backup, clinging for dear life in the NFL, um, now signing with the Los Angeles Rams. So when you find. I think it's in Kansas City now. He was with the Rams Kansas last year, and then now, City now, yeah, he's setting himself up yeah, to be like nice three million dollars. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. uh, I should have learned to play backup quarterback. But <laughs> my point being, yeah, you can go into each one of these drafts and say, yeah, we're, mm. we're going to always keep an open mind, open mind. But just while you're keeping that open mind, keep in mind that if you're one of these teams, the Cowboys. Kansas City Chiefs, if you're one of these teams that has an MVP caliber guy, Baltimore Ravens mm. with Lamar Jackson, just know how nearly impossible it is to find that guy and don't be so willing mm. to shed that guy for a less expensive guy because you're afraid of the numbers. Sometimes you have to ante up and then put the onus on your front office and your scouting department to make sure that the team you build around them yeah. with our value pieces that can impact games however they need to impact well, games. San Francisco is the opposite of what Kansas City is. Mm -hmm. To me, Kansas City is just shedding players, but they've got the best quarterback right. in football. Right, so they just ride with that. So, yeah. so and you, it, as long as yeah. that's how good he is. As yeah. long, so we and, and, we're gonna, and, we're, yeah. and we maybe think these things about Joe Burrow, but Joe Burrow can't stay healthy. You know, there was a time there where you're thinking, boom, they mm -hmm. hit it, Joe Burrow. He, can, he doesn't play all the time. Mm -hmm. Patrick Mahomes plays all the time. So mm -hmm. you can – Get rid of players. You can move on from players because you have that guy. Stabilizing. But if course. you don't have that guy, churn it. Just keep churning it that until maybe you get lucky, you know, and you trade up for Patrick Mahomes and boom, you got yeah. your guy. If your but starting you know, quarterback a, was Cooper Rush going into the season yeah. or going into the draft, you draft a guy. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, back, I guess yeah. back to Amber's point. Well, to Brian's if point, they, if they didn't trade for Trey Lance, I'd say draft a guy. That's that's how I would look at it. Yeah. If they to me, I they, they've already invested in Trey Lance, but you know, but Trey Lance keep me from drafting Michael Penix if he fell to me at twenty four. I don't think so. Well, the other thing is they got to make a decision so. on Trey Lance by next year. Yeah, I know. I mean, but I think Trey Lance up at that point. I think Trey. And the problem is though, and and I'm not being mean here. What if the coaching situation changes? Now does Trey Lance? They've they've invested two years into Trey Lance. Does a new coach, new staff come in and say? Ah, uh, you know, but here you are. You've invested. I will tell you this. If it were me making the decision, what I'm factoring in with regards to Mike's future here yeah. has to do with what's happening at the quarterback position because I do think of all the names you can yeah. throw out, out there around the league, I think he is one that I trust to be able to develop no a young quarterback. No question. So if to I'm, if I'm yeah, developing man. young quarterbacks, yeah. Yeah. that would be factored into whatever decision I'm making on his future because right. I'm like, I trust that guy to, to do that well. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. All right, we're going to take our final break. We'll come back. We'll see where we go. We only have about five minutes when we get back, so we'll see. We'll be back. DallasCowboys.com radio. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Don't put off getting your oil change, Dallas. Take 5 Oil Change. A proud partner of the Cowboys is faster than you think. There's no appointment needed and no waiting room. Yep, you heard that correctly. Take 5 is so fast, you don't even have to get out of your car. You can take advantage of Take 5's fast, friendly, and simple service at any of their locations across the Dallas area. And remember, at Take 5, you stay in your car because they're faster than you think. Take 5, the official oil change of the Dallas Cowboys. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code COWBOYS 
Cowboys VIP. That's getjackblack.com slash Cowboys with the code Cowboys VIP. They say champions are remembered, but legends are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you. Back to the break. Saddle up for the country sip and stroll in the Star District on April 17th. Enjoy themed sips and bites, country music, photo moments, gift shopping, exclusive offers, complimentary Western takeaways, and more featuring over 15 participating shops, restaurants, in the Star District. Get your ticket at stardistrict.com. Welcome back. Final segment of The Break Life from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. This show is presented by LG. Uh, and here's what we're going to do. I don't think we have enough time to jump into another position, so we'll just pick up where fault. we left off next week. I know it is my fault. Uh, but what we will do is I do have a, a one more question for you guys I want to yeah. talk about a quarterback. When we talk about quarterback, we spend quite a bit of time, obviously, talking about Dak Prescott. A sizable about an amount of time talking about Trey Lance. Very rarely do we ever talk about Cooper Rush. And since he's been here, he's done nothing but be a really good, win. serviceable backup quarterback and win. <laughs> cool. Exactly. Yeah, Should there be more consideration that if, for whatever reason, things don't work out on a long-term basis with Dak Prescott, that Cooper Rush should be your next guy in line? He was a great backup. Um, but <laughs> was <laughs> right. Wow. No, like no, no, no. He is. Tough, sorry, tough sorry. Water, okay, no. <laughs> no, I'm saying when when he was on the field playing, he's yeah. been a great backup. Got it. Um, I still think, he, but that's what it is. I mean, I don't I don't want to diminish his work or anything, but I don't <laughs> see him necessarily right now as who I would want to have as a starter and. Again, I was here during the whole period where we were switching quarterbacks oh, yeah. and, and mm -hmm. chickens with no heads running mm -hmm. around like, oh, my God, I met so <laughs> many quarterbacks. Didn't do it for you. Brandon Whedon didn't do They were it for all nice. Rough Brandon year. Whedon, he was a great man. He was a great, nice guy. But on the field, uh, we had a lot of problems there. So I've been through that is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And we have all seen what that looks like. So I'm not willing or... I think with with um, Rush, what helped was everybody who he had around him the and the job that Kellen Moore yeah. was doing in just planning everything out for him and, and scheming things. So I think that's what really helped him. If he doesn't have those necessary tools mm -hmm. around him, the O-line is not doing what they need to do, the running back is not running and finding holes and rushing, you're screwed up. And we, we we spent a lot of time <laughs> talking about uh, Trey Lance. <laughs> That's the truth. Yeah, we spent a lot of time talking about Trey Lance and how we we need we need to see him on the field and his development and things like that. That's because we don't know where his ceiling is. Nope. So we need to see where that is. We know where Cooper Rush's ceiling is. It, it's as one of the best backup quarterbacks in the league. He's still only thirty, um, but I don't see him as a starting quarterback in the league, not one that can take you on a deep playoff run or anything of that nature. And keep it in perspective in that while the Cowboys should and do give Cooper Rush his roses, and I believe that Cowboys fans, more of them should give Cooper Rush his roses as well. Mm -hmm. It's also true that this is the same quarterback in Cooper Rush that, you know, McCarthy moved on from at one point yeah. when he brought in Andy Dalton and then he released. So it was Andy Dalton and Ben DiNucci backing up Dak Prescott and then Cooper Rush mm -hmm. ended up with the New York Giants and Jason Garrett before circling Wait a minute. Back. Are we sure this coach is good with quarterbacks? <laughs> 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 we no, just kill kidding, our whole just second. kidding, Mike. Just <laughs> kidding. Uh, Derek, Derek is like, I'm <laughs> adamant he's good with these quarterbacks. I think then to, Patrick goes, he got rid of the Andy Dalton. I think, and I think to be fair, you, you got to talk about where Andy Dalton, where, where was Andy Dalton oh, at that point in his career? I think it's I time to end the show. And I don't right. know that, I, I, yeah, I don't know that um, that many people could have fixed Danucci's <laughs> technique, right? So the uh, side, okay, so that's another story. Point being, um, 
the battle cats. Yeah, have point being, the, the Cowboys <laughs> Whatever is, uh, is. certainly have a lot he's of value. In, he's in Denver. Oh, okay. Yeah, they certainly have a lot of value in Cooper Rush, and he's earned that right. Yeah. Um, but I, I say that to say they know what Cooper Rush's ceiling is. They're trying to figure out what a guy like Trey Lance's ceiling is. Hell, they're still trying to figure out what Dak Prescott's ceiling is based mm -hmm. on regular season versus postseason yeah. play. Um, so of those three quarterbacks, Cooper Rush is the only one where you can look at them and you can say, you know what, I know you're one of the better backups in the league. But I also know that four or five game stretch is probably the max for you. If you ask him to go out there and start 17 games, unless your defense is maniac mode all 17 games, then you're probably not making a, a playoff run. I would have killed for him in 2000, 2001, no 2002 doubt. when yeah, we didn't have a no quarterback. Doubt. But in this day and age, uh, Patrick's right. He's he's going to win you probably five, six games maybe seven, but your your defense has got to be really good. There's really nothing really dynamic about his game. And I think in this day and age, you have to have chunk plays. You have to be dynamic. Yes. You have to be able to be a leader. You have to convert on third down. You have to be good in the red zone. You have to have a lot of things happen for you, you know, to, to be a quarterback, to have success. He's good at not messing the game up. Absolutely. You know, he takes what the game plan is. He executes it to the best of his ability. It can win you six or seven games. Mm -hmm. if, you know that's where he's at. So long term future with him, I would say not at all. And, and that's and also, not keeping me from getting somebody else. And also, it's a ripple effect because, uh, like Brian says, Cooper Rush isn't necessarily he's not a risk taker, yeah. right? Which is why he keeps the ball clean. Um, he doesn't necessarily take the the deep shots. But what does that mean for a guy like Ceedee Lamb? If you look at Ceedee Lamb's yeah. production, it turned all the way down with Cooper Rush as quarterback. And then when Dak Prescott came back, it turned all the way up. So, you know, when you're talking about the the future productivity of like your franchise wide receiver and things like that, keep that in mind it, when you're pondering, would we, you know, settle, which is what you would do would be doing too, for Cooper Rush. Because he's practicing with like second team guys Well, that, that's true, that. but also it's it goes to his nature as well. This is why I keep calling him Cool Hand Luke. Number one, he's always the same, win or lose, bad play, good play. But he really, he's not your riverboat guy. He's not the gambler. He's not the guy that, it didn't work in Dak Prescott's favor in 2022 with the, the number of interceptions, but you saw Dak Prescott still taking those gambles on the back end of 2023. It didn't result in uh, interceptions, which is great, but a lot of those shots, like deep crosses over the middle, you're not going to see Cooper Rush take those shots. Mm -hmm. uh, double coverage, tight window, Rush is going to think twice and pull it down and check down. Mm -hmm. Dak Prescott's going to let that fly, and it might become a chunk play, but like Brian said, this is a chunk play league. If you want to compete against some of the better defenses in the league and keep those pass rushes honest, especially in the NFC East, you're going to have to stretch the field. So eventually, after you get past the fifth or the sixth game and Cooper Rush gets – figured out by the opposing defense, the field shrinks and he's in a lot more trouble than you would be otherwise. That's a wrap. We appreciate you guys joining us. We'll be back next week. Next week we'll talk about running backs. Hopefully we get to wide receivers, <laughs> maybe even tight ends. By training we'll camp, we'll have this all done. <laughs> you go. We got plenty of shows left till we get to training camp. Till then, for Patrick Walker, Brian Broaddus, Amber Garcia, I'm Derek Eagleton. This has been The Break, live on DallasCowboys.com radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!